you are a human judging machine. This is your biology. This is what kept your ancestors safe. This is what created group cohesion, which was survival because group survival was individual survival. And our ancestors did this through fierce egalitarianism, which is basically fierce equality, meaning nobody above or below. If you weren't pulling your weight, you could maybe be bullied, ridiculed, or killed, or exiled from the group. And if you hoarded resources and got a big ego and did things like that, same thing. Fierce egalitarianism. Those are the genes and the biology, the mental machinery that you and I have thanks to our ancestors. In the modern world, though, groupthink with 7 billion humans is going to get you into trouble. And the way information moves and changes today, the way innovation happens, the way new ideas happen, groupthink, consistency bias, perceptual bias, all the different biases that we've been able to figure out that are, again, a byproduct of nature, these things get you into trouble. So we judge others based on what we think they know or don't know, or the labels they give to themselves or the identity they put out into the world. And we usually judge harshly others more than ourselves. Some of us judge ourselves. Some of us judge ourselves harshly and judge the outside world less harshly. It's a mixed bag, of course. But what you want to do is remove judgment from your mental operations as much as possible. The more that you judge things, the more you are pretending to know what's truth and what's right, what's wrong, what's this, what's that, but you don't know. Judgment itself is a bit of egotistical kind of calculation where you think you have all the information and you make a calculation based on that information. Thing is, is like you don't have all the information. You never do. A lot of our judgments come from the external world, our upbringing, our indoctrination, our quote unquote education, things that we think we know, things that we think are good or bad, which again, those are judgments itself doesn't even exist. Our morality, the morality of people around us, the morality of you know culture, society, a state. And we have all these pretty strongly held ideas, most of which have never been fully vetted, fully analyzed, picked apart, put through a stress test. Most of it is just confirmation bias, confirmation bias, confirmation bias, where we create echo chambers in our lives and social media takes us to a completely another level, but we do this anyways. Humans create echo chambers for ourselves because we believe what we want to believe, we see what we want to see, and we don't see what we don't want to see. So what we do is we walk around basically reaffirming our worldviews. Every bit of information that comes into our eyes and ears goes to reaffirming that. And if anything comes in to threaten that, we attack it. We ridicule it, we condemn it, we ostracize it. If you want to be a successful human, you have to be as open to seeing truth, as open to your blind spots, aware of your blind spots. They call it self-awareness, just awareness, just openness. Because the more open you can be, the further away from your ego you are, the more likely you are to see truth, see opportunity, and not make mistakes of the mind, which lead to mistakes in real life. Think about when you're analyzing a relationship of some friends or a friend who's dating somebody new or whatever. You have all these opinions, all these judgments, all these labels. You can almost certainly know how this is going to end up. You might even place a bet on it. Maybe you bet this friend or that friend that knows the same friends and you bet that it will last three months or six or whatever. Now consider the person in that relationship. They're with somebody who you perceive as similar to somebody they were with before. And you wonder how they can be, in your opinion, so naive, so blind. Maybe you're onto something, but maybe you're not. Maybe you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Well, wait, you don't know. And maybe you're making a lot of assumptions and you're only seeing the things that you're trained to see because you've been following this person around, because you've been watching this person date similar people in your mind, similar, right? Although nobody is the same. Everyone is different and similar in many ways. And so you see through confirmation bias, the things that you're trained to see. So when this person brings somebody around, invariably you see the last person they brought around in this person. And then you accent those things you see in that person, whether or not they're even there. Or it's because something else completely, maybe this person has a lot of good qualities and they look good in paper and that threatens you or that threatens what you think about your relationship or your partner. And then you get into the comparison game. And then bias takes over, ego takes over, emotion takes over, and you find reasons why you must not like this person. Maybe the person in the relationship is finding reasons why they must like this person because 
there's certain qualities or a lifestyle or certain benefits they get out of it. And so they're blind to the bad parts. Of course, it goes all around. Everybody, every human is guilty of this because this is just human nature. If you suspend judgment, labels, belief, opinions as much as you can in your life, whether that is evaluating a relationship for a partner for yourself or somebody else, whether that is coworkers, what to think about them, what to say, how to respond, how not to respond, how to act towards a boss, what to say to a boss, what not to, partners, friends, people at parties, every social situation in your life, if you can suspend judgment, if you can suspend bias, which judgment and bias are clearly linked, and you can just let people do what they need to do, tilt your head and say, oh, interesting. Rather than having such definitive statements about something or definitive opinions about something, the life you will get will be so much better than the life of being a judgment machine, which you are designed as a human. Judge less, have less opinions, have less definitive statements and thoughts and beliefs about all things, but especially people, because people are complex and they come off in various ways and they might wear the heart on the sleeve or they might not, or they might be sensitive or they might be outspoken. They might be compensating. They might be sure of themselves. They might not be sure of themselves. They might be sure of themselves on the outside, but unsure of themselves on the inside. On and on and on and on and on it goes. Humans are very much a paradox in most of the things we do and a contradiction in most of the things we do say, live, think, and feel. So give other humans the freedom to do that, the leeway to do that, the grace to do that, whatever you want to call it and however you want to think about it. The less you are to come to definitive conclusions, the better you are because the more likely you are to receive information rather than only see what you want to see, so you're more likely to receive all the information, see all the information. And the more likely you are to just let time do its thing where you really get to know somebody over a period of time, or you really let this thing happen over a period of time, which gives you more data, more information, you make better decisions. And then you don't jump to hasty conclusions that come from shortchanging that process, that discovery process of time and information gathering, because everything in your life is time and information gathering. The more information you gather and the more time you use to gather it, the better that information, the stronger your maybe assumptions or judgments or labels of this thing, like the more likely you are to make a good decision because you have seen more and you have more data to go on. And then over time, you'll kind of get an intuitive feel as far as most things go, whether it's a project, whether you should keep doing this thing or quit, whether it's a person you should hang out with or not, whether it's a relationship you should end or not. Over time, as they say, your intuition will tell you, which all your intuition is, your mind collecting all kinds of data points over a period of time, and then it becoming obvious to your subconscious what is going on here and how to think and feel about this thing. And even then, you might make a decision with that information, but you don't need to be so aggressive about it and so committed to it. Just take a step back, be less certain, be less committed to your ideas and your beliefs, and follow in the footsteps of Socrates and know that you know nothing, which is not that you actually know nothing, but it is a reminder to stay as close as you can to knowing nothing because that keeps you more open. Because the second you know, you don't see. The second you know, you don't learn. Get on the Better Human newsletter two to three times a week to make you a better human over at thebetterhuman.co. I appreciate you watching and or listening and I'll see you in the next one.